On this week's conversation, we're talking all things winter squash. We're gonna talk about the most common three varieties of winter squash. We're gonna talk about how you cook them, and I'm gonna show you a fun little recipe at the end. You don't wanna miss any of this. My name is Scott, this is Learning Vegetarian. Let's get started. On this week's conversation, I wanted to spend some time talking about winter squash. I used to believe that these guys were just decorative pieces that were held in the produce aisle until I learned to cut into it, and I found that each one of these provided something completely different and a completely different taste. So I want to walk through each one of these today and show you how amazing they are. Stick around because at the very end, I got a fun little butternut squash croquette recipe that you're not going to want to miss. Let's get started. Hey. If you like this content and want to see more like it, hit that thumbs up and let me know. Otherwise, let's get back to this week's conversation. Most people know about squash, whether it's zucchini or butternut or acorn, acorn squash, they just assume all squash is the same. But actually, there's two different types of squash. There's the winter squash and then there's the summer squash. Now, the winter squash is going to be more like your pumpkins, your spaghetti squash, your acorn, your butternut squash, all of those. They have a hard, hard texture on the outside that keep them preserved for a long period of time. The name winter squash actually came from the fact that these guys are harvested in the fall, but because of their hard exteriors, they actually can last through the winter and they'll have an extremely long shelf life. If you didn't know it, squash is actually related to melons, whether it's cantaloupe or watermelons. They're not the same, but they are in the same family. The first squash I want to talk about is the acorn squash. It got its name from the acorn shape that it has, but this guy comes in multiple colors, whether it's green, orange, white, or yellow, or multicolor, are on the top. These guys are delicious. They're packed in vitamin B, vitamin C, and a lot of fiber. You cut them in half, throw some olive oil in them, and roast them in the, in the oven, and they are delicious. Fill them with a quinoa filling or any kind of salad, and they are great to serve. Next up for our squash bucklers is our spaghetti squash. That is so hard to say, spaghetti squash, spaghetti squash. The spaghetti squash got its name from the actual interior. Once you cook it and separate the pulp inside, it looks like spaghetti strands and you can eat it as a spaghetti alternative. This guy derived from the Americas and was later taken to Europe by earlier settlers to spread across the world. They were huge in Asia and they actually didn't make it big into the Americas until 1980. While it does fit in the squash family, it is not as high as fiber as some of the other squash members. It does have two grams of fiber per serving, which is still above most other vegetables, but it's not as high as maybe, say, the acorn or the butternut. This is the spaghetti squash. This is my most favorite one, and this is the butternut squash. This guy is harvested in the early autumn, but lasts through the late months of winter on the shelf. This is the most commonly known squash out there for winter squash, and probably something you've heard or seen of. They're full of vitamin A, vitamin B, they are full of potassium, they've got a lot of fiber in them, they are so good for you. They're great for digestion, they're great for your blood pressure, and they're great for your skin and for your hair. This guy does wonders, and it tastes so delicious. Peel the skins right off, take out the interior seeds, Chop it up, throw it on a half sheet, roast it for about 30 minutes, and this guy is delicious. So good. This is my favorite squash right here. I highly recommend it. To get started, place your butternut squash on its side and using a large knife, chop down the center and rotate around the butternut squash. Watch your fingers and cut around it until you can pry it open. Once inside, scrape out all of the excess pulp and seeds. Using a vegetable peeler, go ahead and peel the outside skin off and chop off any of the ends. Using a cheese grater, go ahead and shred about two cups or one side of your butternut squash. 
Watch your fingers while you're doing this. Place your two cups of butternut squash in a mixing bowl. Add a quarter cup of chopped scallions. Throw in about a teaspoon of garlic. For whatever reason, when I was filming this, I went out of order and decided to get my egg ready. So you want to make sure you have one scrambled egg ready to go. You can put that in now or after the flour. Add in a half cup of flour. Add some pepper and make sure you salt this liberally. Add in your egg and mix everything up together. Meanwhile, get a skillet nice and hot using a high heat oil and cover the interior of the pan with the oil. I recommend using like a grape seed. Once your mixture is complete and your pan is hot, place small piles within your skillet and fry on each side for about three to five minutes or until brown. When your croquettes are done cooking, place on a paper towel lined plate to absorb any of the excess oil. These are so good. Top them with a nice Greek yogurt or sour cream, and maybe even some Parmesan cheese, and these are delicious. I hope you leave this a little more knowledgeable about winter squash. I hope you enjoy those butternut squash croquettes, and I hope you take this information and make it your own. My name is Scott, this is Learning Vegetarian. Until next time.